This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Of Bilbo Baggins, that is, was the fabulous Bella Donna Took, one of the three remarkable daughters of the old Took, head of the hobbits who lived across the water, the small river that ran at the foot of the hill. It was often said, in other families, that long ago one of the Took ancestors must have taken a fairy wife. That was, of course, absurd, but certainly there was still something not entirely hobbit-like about them, and once in a while members of the Took clan would go and have adventures. They discreetly disappeared, and the family hushed it up, but the fact remained that the Tooks were not as respectable as the Bagginses, though they were undoubtedly richer. Not that Belladonna Took ever had any adventures after she became Mrs. Bungo Baggins. Bungo, that was Bilbo's father, built the most luxurious hobbit hole for her, and partly with her money, that was to be found either under the hill, or over the hill, or across the water, and there they remained to the end of their days. Still it is probable that Bilbo, her only son, although he looked and behaved exactly like a second edition of his solid and comfortable father, got something a bit queer in his make-up from the Took side, something that only waited for a chance to come out. The chance never arrived, until Bilbo Baggins was grown up, being about fifty years old or so, and living in the beautiful hobbit hole built by his father, which I have just described for you, until he had in fact apparently settled down immovably. By some curious chance, one morning long ago in the quiet of the world, when there was less noise and more green, and the hobbits were still numerous and prosperous, and Bilbo Baggins was standing at his door after breakfast, smoking an enormous long wooden pipe that reached nearly down to his woolly toes, neatly brushed, Gandalf came by. Gandalf, if you had heard only a quarter of what I have heard about him, and I have only heard very little of all there is to hear, you would be prepared for any sort of remarkable tale. Tales and adventures sprouted up all over the place, wherever he went, in the most extraordinary fashion. He had not been down that way under the hill for ages and ages, not since his friend the old Took died, in fact, and the hobbits had almost forgotten what he looked like. He had been away over the hill and across the water on business of his own, since they were all small hobbit boys and hobbit girls. All that the unsuspecting Bilbo saw that morning was an old man with a staff. He had a tall pointed blue hat, a long grey cloak, a silver scarf over which a white beard hung down below his waist, and immense black boots. "'Good morning,' said Bilbo, and he meant it. The sun was shining, and the grass was very green. But Gandalf looked at him from under long, bushy eyebrows that stuck out further than the brim of his shady hat. "'What do you mean?' he said. "'Do you wish me a good morning, or mean that it is a good morning, whether I want it or not?' or that you feel good this morning, or that it is a morning to be good on. All of them at once, said Bilbo, and a very fine morning for a pipe of tobacco out of doors into the bargain. If you have a pipe about you, sit down and have a fill of mine. There's no hurry. We have all the day before us. Then Bilbo sat down on a seat by his door, crossed his legs, and blew out a beautiful grey ring of smoke that sailed up into the air without breaking and floated away over the hill. "'Very pretty,' said Gandalf. "'But I have no time to blow smoke rings this morning. I'm looking for someone to share in an adventure that I'm arranging, and it's very difficult to find anyone.' "'I should think so. In these parts—' We're plain, quiet folk and have no use for adventures. Nasty, disturbing, uncomfortable things make you late for dinner. I can't think what anybody sees of them, said our Mr. Baggins, 
and stuck one thumb behind his braces and blew out another even bigger smoke ring. Then he took out his morning letters and began to read.